you so much. Thank you. Please. Please. Thank you so much. So, Edmonton. I, you know, uh, I'm from Montreal. And I recognize how beautiful Montreal is. I mean, everybody tells you how beautiful Montreal is, except for the potholes. I don't know if any of you have been to Montreal recently, but I was there a couple months ago, and I hurt my back being in a car going over the potholes. Uh, but Montreal is a beautiful city. Everybody knows it. Flying over, coming into Edmonton, just as I did this evening, this afternoon, are you aware of how beautiful Edmonton is? It, 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 it's an extraordinary looking city. And the kind of thing, you know, you come in, everything's green and it's slightly rainy. And I, I, I was, uh, I, I, I live in Southern California now, which is drought country. So when it rains, <clears throat> it's really unusual and I love it. Of course, when it rains all the time, uh, you want to get away. And, 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 and my background in Montreal was skiing, and so I know about winters. So uh, Edmonton's nice and green and, and warm, and then the snow's come. <laughs> so I understand about that. But uh, coming from Canada, and I made my way down to the United States, you guys are in the way of the people who paid the most money. <laughs> Oh, there's a little lady here, the camera's taller than she is. So, <laughs> so I, 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 Montreal, and then basically on to New York, and I was, in, I was uh, a Canadian in uh, America. And uh, I'd get, uh, all the time I'd get, uh, you're Canadian, aren't you? So I worked hard because they said, you're Canadian, aren't you? And I said, how do you know? And they say, it's the way you say, oh, the boot house. <laughs> so I worked hard. Out, about, house, out, about, house. You're Canadian, aren't you? Yes, how do you know? It's the way you say, out, about, house. I can't work hard enough. I took my shoes into the shoemaker uh, sometime. And uh, the little guy is working on me. He looked up at me and he said, uh, You're Canadian, aren't you? And I said, Yeah. He said, You know I know? And I said, Yes. The way I say out, uh, about, and house. He said, No, it's your shoes. They're stamped made in Canada. <laughs> It's the truth. So I'm going to sit down because I hurt my back in one of those potholes in Montreal. So, you know, Canada. Here I am, back in Canada. Do, do any of you remember the Winter Olympics in uh, Vancouver? And, uh, so, so to our national embarrassment, I mean, I was in Los Angeles. They had asked me to come up to do the closing ceremony. And when I saw the opening ceremony, I was so glad I was in the closing ceremony. <laughs> if you recall, they had these wonderful spars, these giant beams that went up, and then they were supposed to collapse. No, they were supposed to go up, they were down. And then there's four beams. The iconic image of the 210 Winter Olympics in Canada. And one beam goes up, and another beam goes up, and the third beam goes up, and the fourth one doesn't go up. There's a malfunction in the opening ceremonies. And I was screaming at the, at the, at the, at the television set while that was happening. I was saying, beam me up! <laughs> Terrible. I was so, I felt so bad being an actor and being on stage all the time. I know things can go wrong, but on national, international, world television, the spar, this thing.
didn't go up. It was a failure. And, and the year before, China had spent $40 billion, $40 billion on the opening ceremonies, and it was fantastic. And everybody's thinking, well, how's Canada? You know, the total income on Canada is $40 million. <laughs> How is Canada going to compete? And I kept thinking, the only way Canada can compete with these big nations like China is imagination and creativity. And that's what they had. Canada had it, except this beam didn't go up. <laughs> well, it was totally rescued by the imagination and the creativity of Canada in the closing ceremonies, because then they had a mime, you know, lasso the beam and pull the beam up, and the, and the excuse the expression, it was beamed up. <laughs> so it was really cool, and everybody laughed, and Canada had saved its reputation, and actually made its reputation of being so, so colorful and so unique. So now, it's the closing ceremonies. They've done that, and everybody's applauded. It feels good. And I'm in the closing ceremonies. In fact, what I have to do is go up through an elevator and get into the arena uh, that, they, that they're using. And in front of, I think the figure was a billion people, say, oh, 10, 12 lines about Canada how wonderful Canada is. So they, they've given me 10, 12 lines, and I learned the lines. But there's always the possibility, like, who forgot the, the words to the American National Anthem? Uh, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Goulet, uh, Bobby Goulet. Forgot the words. He was asked to sing the national anthem to America. Oh, say, can you see? And he stopped there. <laughs> and couldn't remember the rest of the words. So that's the, that's the phantom in front of every actor. What if I forget the words? What if I forget the words? And the older you get, the more the... the uh, What's the name of the, um... <laughs> There's a little thing in, near your brain which is the source of, uh, of immediate memory, and it slowly erodes <laughs> past the age of 25, and I am past the age of 25. <laughs> so they said to me, would you like to have a teleprompter come up with it? I mean, I've memorized it, but if you had a teleprompter there, you know, it's supposed to come up in an elevator, and if the teleprompter comes up, and now I'm walking around in front of a billion people, we love Canada, we're Canada, we learned to make love in a canoe, and, you know, that was part of the word. But if I just had the security, in case it went up, they look at the word, I could look at a word, I wouldn't have to worry. So I'm backstage. Well, I'm not backstage. I'm under the stage. What they've done is built a whole floor under which is all the mechanism that is doing the show. All the stuff that works, all the wires and pipes and projection, it's all down there. And it's all connected wireless. You've got a wire in your ear, and then the people are way up there, and they're calling the stuff. Move the, get the camera, get the foot, get the five, putting a flash of thing, move the elevator. Well, I'm back, I'm under the stage, and the folk singer, well, I forgot his name, folk singer is singing up there, and I'm there, and here's the elevator, and here's the, 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 the prompter. And I, I come in and I, I got my cue and I'm ready, waiting for the, the folk singer to, to come down the elevator. And two technicians are working on the teleprompter. <laughs> They're pounding the thing, it's not working. And I'm thinking, that spar, 
never went up. <laughs> and they're pounding on the teleprompter that I've sort of relying on it, and it's not working. What am I going to do? Now the elevator's coming down. These guys are pounding, pounding, pounding. And I, is it ready? No, no, it's not ready. And I hear the guy, the, I get, get Shatner in the elevator. The smoke shaker gets up and says, good luck. Is it good luck? I get in the elevator. All right, the elevator's coming up. The guys are pounding, pounding on it. And finally, the elevator goes up, and he goes up with me, and I'm saying, and now, here I am, in can And the words are there. The spark did go up. The teleprompter did work. Canada is great, isn't it? <laughs> All that pounding, I'm out of breath. Okay, so, why don't I turn this over like to questions and answers. You know, there's some people who wanted to ask me a question, and I don't usually answer the question. <laughs> but maybe I will in passing. So, uh, 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 is somebody on the microphone over here? Somebody over there? Just speak into the microphone nice and loudly. What's the name? What, are you sorting yourself out? Somebody in a blue shirt, ask somebody who's not in a blue shirt to ask a question. <laughs> I got a quick question. There you go. Danny What's Craig. A, wait a minute. What's a quick question? Danny Craig. That's the question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think the question is your mentality. <laughs> come back, come back, Danny Craig. Gentlemen with Danny Craig, come back. I want to be sure it was your mentality. What, okay. I just love Boston Legal, so would you like to just tell us some stories about Danny Craig? Okay, so um, I don't think I came to Edmonton in my one-man show. Uh, so I'll tell you the story that I tell in this show that I, uh, I did on Broadway and then uh, a tour Canada in for a while. I were working late at night. Uh, everybody, the, the whole cast, uh, James Bader and, and uh, James Bader. <laughs> And, and I have had kidney stones before, but I long ago forgot. But apparently, if you make kidney stones, you continue to make kidney stones. I drink a lot of tea, and apparently, there's oxalates in the tea, and and, uh, and uh, it makes kidney stones. So we're working late at night, and and suddenly I get this terrible pain, and I throw myself across uh, Spader's desk, and oh my God! And James says, are you going to play the scene that way? Says, no, I got it. I'm going to play it. And he says, you're going to give kidney stones. And you're right. I'm like, oh, my God. So they call an ambulance. And like, they take the hospital. And, and, and kidney stones have to pass. There's nothing you can do unless it's so serious you have an operation. So they, they give you pain medication. And then you're all right. You think you're all right until this little crystal, this little crystal with sharp edges. <laughs> I don't have small crystals. <laughs> I have big crystals. <laughs> and, and, and then you have to know it's going So, excuse me, kids. You have to pee into a net or a, a thing so, so that when the crystal comes out, you know, so they don't have to operate. All right. So out comes this huge crystal. <laughs> oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. Out there. It's huge. It's as big as my wife's wedding ring. <laughs> Same purity you try. <laughs> so it makes the news, okay? And I uh, uh, had a kidney stone screaming and yelling. I bet he didn't have a kidney stone. He just likes to scream and yell. <laughs> no, I had a kidney stone. So, Um, dragon, Golden Dragon, GoldenDragon.com is a gambling uh, app uh, here in Canada 
and they're not allowed to advertise because it's gambling. What they do is they get, they get, they, they, they do um, deeds. They do uh, strange things like Donnie Banaducci Bana uh, when he was doing celebrity boxing had goldenpalace.com on his back. They bought a sandwich that had the figure of Christ on it, uh, a, 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 a cheese sandwich. So they bought, we've got that. So they, they did the, that sort of thing. So they called me. And they said, we want to buy your kidney stone for $25,000. Wow. But I'm a Canadian. I said, I want 100000 We settled on $75,000. $25,000. I had $100,000. We gave it to Habitat for Humanity, and there's a family living in a house that my kidneys don't buy. So, when you say a quick question, what would you like to know? Um. Again, with Danny Crane, my grandmother actually had dementia, and your portrayal of Grant, um, Danny helped me to some extent to understand wow. what she was going through, wow. and helped a little bit um, to try and make that transition. I was just wondering if you had actually met with anybody or studied anybody with dementia before you took on that role. First of all, my deepest, deepest symptoms, I can't think of anything more horrible the way to go when you lose yourself you know like i was trying to think i've got it i was trying to think of the 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 the, the piece of your body that remember that is supposed to be part of the remember the amygdala i couldn't think of it but i just thought of it. so so you know whenever you, anybody i mean you forget where your keys are you can be 12 but when you're my age and you forget where your keys are you think am i dying <laughs> so when you can't think of your name. When I went to visit uh, a friend and, uh, who was in the hospital who was suffering from that, uh, and I said, so, so tell me, where are you from? Where are you from? And she started to cry. She said, don't ask me that, because she couldn't remember where she was from. My wife, Elizabeth's father, when I met Elizabeth uh, 20 years ago, 19 years ago, he had, it was, it had the beginnings of dementia. A good-looking guy, a vital guy, and he was losing himself. He was at the stage where he was aware that he was getting it. So, I mean, you've got to think what it must be like for someone to peer into the future and realize it was going to be horrible. You begin to forget everything, your bodily function level in your mind and who you are as a daughter, but everything. It's got to be overwhelming. And I said to him, if I buy you a tape recorder, that is activated by your voice, a voice activated tape recorder. Will you speak into the microphone and tell me your feeling as this is happening? So maybe we can write about it. And, 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 and there's a book here, I said, Doc, there's a book here about, about how you feel about this affliction that you have, and how it's affecting you, and if it gets worse, how it's affecting you. Can you do that? He said, I will. I will do that. So I bought a voice-activated microphone, and he usually spent time at the dinner table. He would just sit at the dinner table for quite a length of time. And his wife, my, my uh, wife's mother, would spend a great deal of time with him. So I explained, just all he has to do is speak. This thing will record. You don't have to turn it on, you don't have to remember. Just speak. Get him to speak about his experiences. It was fairly clear, about three or four minutes, and then everything else 
didn't make any sense, and after a week or two, it just stopped. So my association with that horrible disease is both personal and it's something that everybody who, who is over a certain age thinks about because if it's the end of your life, but it's a horrible way to go. So my sympathies, uh, be patient. There are times you will remember. There's one other thing that comes back to me, and that is, as my wife was at his bedside towards the end, and she whispered in his ear, I love you, Daddy. And she had his hand, his head grasped hers. He had heard her and seemed to understand. Okay? the trouble with tribbles yes <laughs> were you aware that you're essentially gonna get pelted with tribbles from people off stage <laughs> <laughs> well so here's i hate to break this to you but it's all pretend <laughs> So, yes, in a way, I was prepared. So we knew, uh, and I, I've seen the episode, uh, that the second of this book, uh, episode more than once, so I can remember. So I'm standing under, uh, above the frame, the frame is the screen. So above the frame is a chute, and I know there's a lot of tribbles in there that are going to come down. I know that much. And I know that some guys in the, where the lights are, have armfuls of dribbles they're going to pelt through. <laughs> but that's all I know. Okay. So I stand under the chute and things come down. I'm expecting it. Okay, I got that. Then these guys, who pride themselves on being baseball players, <laughs> start throwing these not-so-soft tribbles at me. And I know what they're doing. They're getting back at me for all the times I've said, who, who put that light on? Now, where's my prop? So they're pelting me with tribbles. And there was one that almost made me laugh. And if you look carefully, I'm almost there. Then I cover it up, I think. Now, as I was saying, I was standing under the chute, I made a film about the spiders once. The Kingdom of the Spiders, it was called, and it had tarantulas in it. Now, tarantulas aren't poisonous, but they bite you, and it stings and hurts, and there's poison. And, and I had to work with these tarantulas. And I'm just like everybody else. I, I you know, your, your basic nature is to get out of the way of a tarantula. Oh my God, there's a tarantula. Holy cats, get away. You know, it's not gonna hurt you much. <laughs> so they had bags of tarantulas that they would dump on me. And tarantulas' little hairs are itching powder. That's how they make itching powder. So they'd have whole bags this size dumping on me uh, when it was like... And I thought, to, I said to the director, I, I've got a guy, an idea for a shot. They have a tarantula on my face and the camera's down there and I'll fall right into the camera and then we'll get the tarantula to walk off so they'll know, the audience will know it's not special effects thing. He said, can you do that? I said, I need a little time. So, I had a little glue. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, how long do you let the glue dry? <laughs> how, how, how adhesive 
is the glue. What kind of a signal could I give the tarantula to get the heck off me? And could I fall right into the focus of the camera? So I tried it once, and the tarantula didn't come off. So I got a little more glue, and it said, whenever you're ready, tell me I'll put the tarantula on. I'm remembering it went on forever. I think I've had a half a dozen tries, and finally I fell into camera. I went, Ugh. and the tarantula woke up and walked off. <laughs> and then they discovered that a photographer was in the frame, and the shot didn't work. Oh. So after they picked him up, <laughs> so we did it again, but I had to figure out how long to let the glue dry and how much to twitch without giving it away. In any case, that was even worse than the triples. <laughs> It's an honor to be in the same room as Danny Crane. Yeah. I'm um, just jump right into it, my question. Might as well, we're just hanging out here. <laughs> Classic Kirk in his prime versus real. What do you mean in his prime? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll accept his prime. Okay. In his prime versus Ruth Kirk. Yeah, and yet, said, wait, classic Kirk in his prime as against what? Uh, Brooks. Reboot Kirk. Chris, Chris Pine. Oh. Pr pi pine. Pine. Prime and Pine. Yeah. Okay, go. <laughs> you want Prime Pine? No. <laughs> All right, let's start again. <laughs> you realize the question is longer than the answer. <laughs> the answer is no. Classic Kirk and his prime versus reboot Kirk. Any form of comeback, Pat, who takes it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I made a documentary called The Captains. Okay. And I got to talk to, and by the way, the company that lent me an airplane was Bombardier, one of the great plane manufacturers in the world, and it's uh, it's in uh, Toronto and in Montreal. It's a Canadian, uh, I don't have to tell you about uh, ski dudes and things like that, but Bombardier makes a great airplane. Okay, so they lent me an airplane and I went around, visited uh, uh, everyone. Um, the um, the uh, classic Kirk and, and uh, and, uh, and, <laughs> and, and classic Kirk and the reboot of a pine. So, so I, I, then I got to visit with, uh, with, uh, uh, pine. What's the first name? Chris. <laughs> I got to visit with Chris Pine because I was uh, 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 documenting all the people who played the, uh, a captain in Star Trek. So I placed a table. Like, what's the main street uh, in Edmonton? Is there a main street in Edmonton? Is it what? Galper. Okay, that street. So in the equivalent, the equivalent in Los Angeles, I placed a little round table with two chairs. And traffic is going by. I got cameras all over, and then I've got I've hired some people extras to surround the table, and and I challenge Shatner challenges Chris Pine to an arm wrestle, okay. and we sit down. Boom! I hit him. I got him. And I got him. He goes, boom! He's got me. And we start the third and deciding match of who could do this, and then I had somebody walk in front of the camera. And when they walked out, we were both looking at each other. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about Prime Time and Prime Time.
Hello, Mr. Chapman. Hello. God, look at all that hair. That's I know. Right. Right. My hairdresser is not in until the 27th. Oh, really? Um, I you can't of... be funnier than I am. Funnier, funnier looking, maybe. No, no, no. Good looking guy. Just, obscu Pretty, uh, obscure. just obscured by all that hair. I need to tweet this now. Uh, I beg your pardon? I'm going to tweet that. <laughs> so, um, it's a bit of a loaded question. And Well, are you loaded? Unfortunately not. Oh. So, this it's is something hard, that's... Hard to get the stuff up here, is it? That's, you know what? what? To get it into the building, that's the hard part. Nice. Right? So, <laughs> so, this is something I'm passionate about. What is that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that. That's the question. So, for you, as an industry professional, and with kind of an interesting outlook on, on the industry as it is right now, and a professional in pop culture and all that, wow. and I follow your Twitter, mm -hmm. um, what do you think of the sort of increase of political correctness and social justice in pop culture media these days, and like sort of forcing diversity um, and that kind of issue? Is, what, what, what's the issue? Uh, it's forcing diversity. In what would you rather have a singular thing? No, no see, I like impulse? diversity. You like it, but are we forcing that diversity? I think we are. How do we force people to be diverse? Because we're trying to avoid offending people. Or oh, it's offending people. But but we don't want to offend. We're Canadians. We don't want to offend. That's people. right. That's what I say. Right. Right. Exactly. There is such a difference between getting on an airplane that comes to Canada and, and somewhere in the States. It's remarkable. I mean, I've all, I always thought, you know, Canada, I the, we all, well, Edmonton isn't on the border, that's the difference. But Montreal, Toronto, it's all within 20 miles of the border. You get all the Americans' television stations. That line, that 49th parallel, is the, the only demarcation is uh, is a Mountie and a, and a, a Border Patrol guy. There, there's there's so little difference. I mean, nobody in America thinks of, thinks of me as being Canadian except the little shoemaker. <laughs> there's so little difference it appears, but there is a great difference, and that difference has to do with with the culture of Canada. It has to do with the fact that, you know, it's just the politics are different. The, in, the, 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 the understanding that uh, bringing new people into the country, to this large, lush, rich country, will only enrich the country, and bringing brains in to help our brains is, is only self-serving. I mean, there's such a difference between Canada and America, I never really thought of it that way until t this time has gone on. And I realize what you're saying, as imperfect as the way you're saying it, <laughs> is quite true. There is a huge difference, and I admire very much the Canadian method of doing things. It doesn't answer your question. But it's a little national plug, so I'm sure you'll agree. Hi, thanks for coming out here. Uh, so, if, going into Star Trek, if you knew beforehand just how big it would become, would you... I'd have asked for more money. <laughs> Apart from that, would you have done anything Apart from that? <laughs> Performance-wise, what okay. else would you have done differently? What would I have done differently? I I had been I've been a theater actor uh, since I was six, been in the theater, and shortly before Star Trek, a year or two before Star Trek, I'd been uh, at Stratford, Ontario. I was a Shakespeare, a Shakespearean actor. It's fun. So reaching out into the theater. And, and, and doing Shakespeare, uh, it requires an energy. And you're out there selling the part, selling the, the, what it is you have to do, and you're reaching for that balcony over there. So there's an energy that the theater actor has. Where it is, if you're on camera. <laughs> you were talking like this. 
can't. Listen, I, I, I want to tell you something. Come here. Come here. There's something I need to tell you. Get away from me! And that's the difference. So I came into Star Trek, like, you know, and then I, as I began to realize what I was doing, I got small. The focus of a theater actor is out there, and the focus of a, of a film actor is like about here. So I had to slowly acquire that. That's what I would have done differently. Okay? Thank you. I'm taking pictures and I'm signing autographs tomorrow. 